Hello and welcome to a 13th section of the Webflow course. Today we're going to learn about forms, how to create input fields that allows your users to enter their email and other credentials that can be connected to third-party apps such as MailChimp or Member Stack. To start, we're going to create a new page. Let's click Pages and then create a new page called Login and then Create. The first thing we're going to do is to add symbols starting with the navbar and then the footer. Since the navbar is positioned absolute, it's not taking any space, so we're going to have to push the content a little bit manually. So let's click body and create a new container and then move that container before footer. And this container is going to have a padding top of 200 and padding bottom of 100. The body is going to use the class body so that we have the same background and fonts. And finally, we can create our form inside the container. For the form, we're going to set container and then add a new element. This time, we're going to look for forms and we have to use the form block. As you can see, they already pre-filled everything. And you can take a look at, for example, the success message, the error message. And this can also be viewed from the element settings if you wish to style these states. For now, we're going to take a look at the fields. So let's open up the different elements that we have. And let's open form. We have the name field and we have the email field. The form itself is fully working. So if you click on submit, it's going to check and validate the email. And if it's fine, then it's going to send an email to you with the information that is being submitted. And obviously that is not ideal, but at least you know that it is working. For each of these fields, you can go to element settings and you can change the name as well as the placeholder. Essentially, we're taking care of the front end, meaning there's no database in the background that is going to receive the information that you're submitting unless you're connecting to a third party like member stack, which takes care of gatekeeping some of the pro content that you have and even takes care of the payments. They have a really good Webflow tutorial if you want to implement the whole flow, including login, sign up, authentication, and then payments as well as showing the pro content to the right people who are logged in. But what I'm going to show you today is the Webflow part, what a Webflow is capable of doing and how to customize the different fields for a login. So here we don't need uh, the name. Usually we have email address. So we're going to delete the name field and then we're going to add a new field. So let's select form and then add a form field. So input and then add a form label. Let's reorder. I'm going to put the field here and then the field after label. For the second field, instead of form label, I'm going to rename it to password. And then for the text field, I'm going to go to element settings and change that to password. The placeholder is going to be your password. Make this required. And we're going to customize the email field as well. For the placeholder is going to be your email and also make this required. Awesome. Now, if you want to take a look at the form block itself, it has a bunch of settings such as switching between success and error. This is pretty straightforward. Um, it's going to validate and it's going to show the message if, for example, the email is not validated. Each field have their own type. So in this case, this is the email type. You also have the password type. So for password, you might want to change to password. Why we have these is because if it's an email, it's going to validate for you the format of the email. So that's really useful. And for the password, it's going to hide whatever the user is typing. Going back to the form block, this is for 
the backend part. So if you're using a third party app, you're going to need the action URL, for example, or the success page. So once it's successful, then it's going to go to a success page and then the method, which can be between get and post. And so that depends on the backend. So that's about it in terms of forms. I cannot implement something that is working for a login because we don't have a system in place for authentication in Webflow. But what I can show you is the newsletter, which is quite easy to set it up and also make it work with adding the emails that people enter and then setting that to MailChimp. So let's do exactly that. Let's go to the footer and here we're going to create a layout for the form. I'm going to select newsletter add a new element and it's going to be a form block. Again, it's giving me some default elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep the email. So let me delete the first, second and third elements. And since I'm removing the label as well, this one is called email too. Let me just change that back to email. And then I'm going to put a placeholder, which is really important, especially because you don't have any label. Otherwise, the user has no idea what to enter. So before we get into the styling, I want to show you how to implement this step by step with MailChimp. Now I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about MailChimp enough to be able to create an audience. An audience is a list of emails that you're going to collect for your newsletter. In this case, I already created one for Webflow. And once you have that done, you need to go to manage audience and then sign up forms. And here we have a bunch of options and I want you to go to embedded forms. And here it's going to give you a bunch of code to make sure that it's easier to see. We're going to go to unstyle. So we have less code and essentially what we need is just this after action is equal to then double quotes, we only need this part. The problem is it's always going to select the entire code. So we're going to have to copy this and then use spotlight. So command space to open text edit. Then here we're going to create a new document, paste our code, and we just need everything that's between the double quotes before method and after action. So it's a full link that has no space and that finishes with ID is equal to. And it looks like this. We're going to copy this link, go back to Webflow and then select the form block and where it says action, we're going to put that whole link. Then we're going to set the method to post and also make sure that the text field has email as a name. The text type is email and you need to make sure that it's required. And then that's it. You're going to need to publish this in order to test it. Let's click on the link. And if you enter your email and submit, it should be sending to your MailChimp audience. So let's do the rest of the styling. I'm going to select the footer and here for the form, let's select the form block and make sure to go to style to change that to flex so that they can be spread horizontally. Now we can style the text field. So I'm going to create a class called input. And for this class, I'm going to set a height of 40. Scroll all the way down to get a radius of 10. And I'm not going to have any style, so no outline. So I'm going to have to click down the X here. Then I'm going to add a slight one pixel shadow. So I'm going to go to box shadow, angle 180, distance one, blur to zero. Now it creates this one pixel shadow. And then from black, I'm just going to set it to 10 in term of alpha. So 10% opacity. For the submit button, I'm going to rename this to subscribe. 
I'm going to set the background to this code. The height is going to be the same as the form, so 40. And I'm going to add a radius of 10. I want to add a little margin to the left so that we have some spacing between the form input as well as the button. But if I put it to this class, I cannot reuse it for here. And it's going to bring that margin that I don't want. So what I can do is to create a compo class called newsletter. And this class is only going to be attached to the submit button. And then as soon as I have this, I'm going to add a 10 pixel in terms of margin to the left. With this done, I can just go and style these text fields using the class input for the text field. The same for the password. And then for the button, I'm going to use submit button like this. And see how it didn't have the margin to the left? That's because it only applies with the combo class. Let me change this text to sign in. Before we conclude, I just want to make this footer adaptive and also test uh, for the login page as well. So first of all, let's make this form block to have a bit of a margin. So I'm going to set it to a margin of 10 to have a bit of spacing. And then we can start testing in tablet. So tablet looks fine. Let's test in mobile landscape. And this is where it gets a bit tricky. So first of all, let's add some padding for the mobile experience. So let me select the container or the form block. And we can add perhaps a 20 padding from the left and 20 from the right. So this should look fine for mobile portrait as well. For here, let me edit the footer. We can select the footer container and add a padding of 20 to the left and 20 to the right as well. And instead of having two columns like this, we can set it to vertical instead. And now it's aligning everything to the left we can decide to align center. Now, if you want to have more spacing, we can always select the text block and add a margin of maybe 30 from the top. Let's test this in mobile portrait as well, and it seems to be working fine. Awesome. We're almost done with this course. In the next one, we're going to learn about e-commerce, which means that we're going to set up a purchase button, a product, and a checkout experience. And on top of that, we're also going to learn how to use custom code to embed tweets from the Twitter API. So I'll see you in the next session.